Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. Today we're going to be doing 45 Dollar Tree DIYs for our spring farmhouse home decor. In order to save time, I'm just going to fly through those supply clips so you can get more details on each of those videos and I'll have them all linked in the description box below. So sit back and relax, enjoy the music, this is going to take a while. And let's get started. I can hear my grandkids in the background. For our first project, we're going to be making a super pretty bicycle wheel spring wreath. And I'm just using some really thick wire that I got from the Dollar Tree. And it leaves a little residue on your hands, that's why I'm wearing the gloves. But I'm just going to start crisscrossing these pieces and attaching them to the second rung of our wreath form. And this is a 12 inch wreath form. And then once I get them all crisscrossed and looking like spokes, I'm going to take my white grosgrain ribbon and wrap it around the first and second rungs of our wreath form. And so I'm just going to ignore the spokes and just go right around them and just keep wrapping and wrapping. And then I'm going to finish it up and glue it closed. And I ran out at the end, but that's okay because our flowers will cover that all up. So now I'm going to take my steering wheel cover and I'm going to wrap it around the entire wreath form. And if you remember, this is a 12 inch wreath form and it won't work with the 14 inch, which Dollar Tree also carries. So then I just took an extra lid that I have from a can of capers and I'm just going to hot glue that right in the middle. Now I'm going to take my lamb's ear and cut that down and just start gluing it down and I'll do one going in one direction and then the other one going in the other direction and then I'll just keep adding until it's nice and full and I want those leaves to kind of show upwards instead of the back of the leaves so you can just twist them around and manipulate them until they're all looking nice and pretty. And then I'm going to take some pretty pink flowers and just cut off those stems and start hot gluing those right in the center. So now I'm going to take my little windmill sign and I'm just pulling off the welcome part by twisting it a little, pretty gently but at the same time giving it a little bit of muscle. And then using some Waverly white chalk paint I'm going to lighten up my sign and make it all rustic and pretty. And here it is all finished and I love how this turned out. I think it's so pretty for spring and it's on the door of one of my dear friend's homes. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next spring DIY, this is actually a trash to treasure and it's not even really trash to start with, but this was my son's wheelbarrow from when he was young. And so it has seen its days and it's been out in the yard so it got weathered and pretty messed up. So I just gave it a really good cleaning and I'm going to redo it. I'm sure there are people out there that have some old toys and I'm just showing how you can maybe bring it back to life and give it a little bit of a resurrection. So all I did was pulled it all apart and then I'm going to tape off the wheel because I want to just paint the inside. And this is the original tire so this has to be at least 30 years old. Anyway, I'm going to take some Krylon matte black spray paint and I'm going to paint the handles and then I'm going to go back in with my Krylon Color Max spray paint in flat white and I'll paint the inside of my tire and then the entire bucket part of my wheelbarrow. So 
So now I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in ink and a sponge brush and I'm just going to go right around the edges and give it that enamel wear look that I love so much and it's such a fun process to do. And then I'm just going to make some random chip marks here and there like you would see in authentic enamel wear. So now I'm going to be cutting out my decal using my Silhouette Cameo 3 and I'm not going to show you the process every time throughout this video but I will go through the steps in this one just so you can get an idea and any of the decals you see me using I will have listed in my Etsy shop at White Sparrow Living. So all I'm going to do is cut the words out and then, or the word in this case there's just one, it's going to say grow and then I'm going to weed out the extra vinyl that's all around the word and then I'll go back in with either a weeding tool or a, even a straight pin will work and weed out the insides of each of those letters. And then I'm going to take some transfer tape and here I'm using some Dollar Tree shelf paper but any transfer tape will work and I'm going to place that on top of my decal and then rub it down with a squeegee or even a credit card and then I'll turn it over and pull the backing sheet off, the paper backing sheet and then I'm going to place it onto my project. So the steps are the same with any decal that you're applying. And because my wheelbarrow is a pretty porous surface, I used my heat gun to make sure that my decal would adhere all the way on there and it melts it just a little bit so that it will suck up to that surface. And the font I'm using for this, and I thought it said grow but it says garden, <laughs> but the font I'm using is called Cream Candy and that's from defont.com. And I'll have all of the fonts listed in the description box below. So now I'm going to take all of my painter's tape off of my tire and start putting my wheelbarrow back together. And of course I'm going to be using my sweet hubby Michael J to do the hard work for me while I do the filming. Everything is so bumpity bumpity when I'm filming because it's on super speed, but I didn't want this to be a five hour video so that's why I'm going a little faster than normal. So now we're going to take some lava rocks that we just had in the garden that we were cleaning out and I'm going to put those in the bottom for drainage and then I'm going to add some pretty plants that we bought from Lowe's and add those in, add our soil, and then it's done. And I don't remember the names of these pretty flowers, but I think I mentioned what they are in the original video. But some of you probably already know because I know there's a lot of plant professionals out there watching. But this is how it turned out and I love it so much. The plants sadly have died since then but I will be filling it again and I can look out the window and see it out in my backyard and remember the days when my 32 year old son was just two. <laughs> For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be making a planter using these cooling racks and I've learned a lot over the last year and a half of doing YouTube and one thing is that spray paint is our friend when painting things that are skinny and there's a lot of surface to be covered. <laughs> so I didn't go outside to paint this and I don't remember why and decided to just do it by hand. That was not a good idea. But I do love painting terracotta pots with my Waverly chalk paint in white. So I'm going to paint all of my pots including the bottom and then I'm just going to make a line around the bottom of it and use my Waverly wax in antique and kind of water it down and keep going over it until I get a really smooth streaky look and it really resembles wood. So I thought this kind of looked like those boho looking pots that have the wood at the bottom of the base. Just like with anything else, the more you do it, the better you get. So eventually I didn't even make the pencil lines. I just measured using my paintbrush to see how wide to get those stripes. And again, make sure you paint the bottoms because those will be peeking out once we tie them to our racks. So now I'm going to take some scrap floral foam and just hot glue those pieces in there. And then I'm going to take some jute twine and tie that around the top and give it some hot glue so that it stays nicely in place. And I'll just wrap that around there a few times and then tie it in the back. And that's what we're going to use to tie it to our rack. Thank you. 
So now to put our plant rack together, I'm going to take both pieces and attach them at the top using some nylon zip ties, and these are from the Dollar Tree, and I'll just pull them super, super tight and make sure that they don't move around, and then I'll just cut off the excess nylon strap, and then I'll use my Waverly chalk paint in ink to cover them in black so you don't see them. So now I'm going to take two pieces of this scrap trellis that I'm using in an upcoming project and I'm just going to take two of these bars and curl them at the ends using my needle nose pliers and that's what's going to keep the bottom of our planter from splitting apart. So I'll just hook those towards the middle of my rack and then it'll be ready to attach our planters to it. So I'm going to stagger my pots and I'll have three on top and then two on the bottom in between those three. And then I decided that I didn't want to put moss into these pots because my greenery is a little bit light towards the bottom. So instead I had seen Liz Fenwick use this method where she took some floral foam and then painted it and it really looked like dirt in her project. So I decided to use that same method and I'm just making circles that are gonna fit inside of my little pots and then I'll paint them with my black chalk paint and then stick that in the top and then I can place my greenery. And here it is all finished and I love this so much. It's so clean and crisp and modern farmhouse looking. I ended up giving this to my brother and sister-in-law when I redid their entire living room for under $500. I think it was like $480 something but I'll have that video linked in the description box below. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be making another pretty spring wreath, but instead of having a traditional circular wreath, we're going to be making it square. So the first thing we're going to do is get our frame ready, and I'm just going to pull up the little tabbies pretty carefully because these frames are made out of like this foam material, so they're not very sturdy, but I'm going to pull all of the backing, including the glass, out of that frame, and then I'm going to push those little tabs over the top so you can't see them from the front. Then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white and paint my entire frame and then I'm going to take some Waverly wax in antique and paint my hello sign and then I'll take some paper towels and just wipe that off. And you do want to be sure to get all of the edges so that when you see it from the side you don't see any of that raw wood. So after my frame is completely dry I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm just going to distress that and get that all rustic looking. And then I'm going to take some lamb's ear that I get from Walmart for $2 a bundle and and I'm just going to embellish the left hand bottom corner so I'll just hot glue some to the side and then to the bottom and then on top of the lamb's ear I'm going to be placing some eucalyptus also from Walmart and also two dollars a bundle. So now I'm going to be making one big perky bow using two Olivia bows and I call them that because that's who taught me how to make these but I'm going to fold it over four times so there's four loops on each side and then I'm going to take my scissors and make tiny little snips in the very center on both sides and then I'll use a chenille stem to wrap that around kind of crunch it down and then twist it in the middle and then I'll foof out my loops and then I'll do the same thing with my polka dotted burlap ribbon and both of these are obviously from Dollar Tree but I think they're so pretty together and they complement each other with those sweet patterns. And then once I get both bows put together I'm going to mesh them together by intertwining those loops and making it look like one big perky bow. And then I'm going to take my hello sign and I'll attach that to the top right corner of our wreath and it is done.
And here it is all finished and I think this turned out so sweet and it was so easy and quick and can be used for not only springtime but all year round. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY we're doing another wreath alternative and I'm using some burlapfabric.com jute webbing so you can use whatever you want you can actually use burlap ribbon and just layer it or you can use fabric there's a lot of different options if you don't have this particular jute webbing so the first thing I did was got my boards ready and I'm making two of these because we have double doors so I want one for each door and so I just took some spackle from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to fill in those holes of these signs and then I'm just using some chalky finish Krylon chalk paint and I'm just going to give that one coat of white and then I decided to make little stripes so that they would kind of look like planks. And I place my boards together so that whatever I do on one side, it's happening on the other side too, so that they'll look the same. And then I'm also going to be painting these cardboard circles that I got from those triangular frames from the Dollar Tree. And to distress my boards, I'm just going to go in with some elephant chalk paint and some antique wax and just blend that all in and get it nice and farmhouse looking. I'll make some squiggly stripes and blend it in with some more white and just keep playing with it until you get it to look like some old weathered barnwood. So now I'm going to make some pockets by using my jute webbing and I'm just going to take two pieces and stack them on top of each other and just hot glue those down. And these are four inches wide. It says it's three and a half inches but it was closer to four so I'm just going to say four. But this is where I was saying if you just use some regular burlap ribbon you would just make more rows of this to make a nice long pocket on the front of these boards. And then I'll glue that down along the bottom of my board and then on the back I'm going to pull that around but I'm going to leave a little gap so that I can slip some flowers inside of my pockets. And I do that by gluing it down at an angle so it's tight at the bottom and looser at the top. So now I'm going to take some more of that heavy duty wire and I'm going to see how large I want to make my holder. And so I'll cut two of these so that they're the same length and my signs will hang at the same level. And then I'm going to make little curly cues at the edge using my needle nose pliers and then I'll hot glue that to the back of my sign on each side and then I'll use another little piece of jute webbing to keep those in place. Before I put on that second side though I'm going to feed on some Amazon wood beads and I'll have these linked in the description box below. So now that my little round cardboard pieces are dry I'm going to take my black paint pen and I get these at Walmart and I'm going to write choose on one and happy on the other. And then I'm going to go back in and use the downstroke method to make a faux calligraphy and just make it a little more fancy and make those downstroke lines a little bit thicker. And then I just made some little vines just to fill in that empty space and I'm going to place those right in the middle of each of my pockets. And I'll use some more Waverly Wax in Antique to distress those and get them all rustic looking. So now I'm just going to fill my pockets with a bunch of prettiness and so I'm using some lamb's ear, some Dollar Tree white flowers and then some lavender and then to make the hanger I'm going to take a little piece of chenille stem and fold it in half and twist it at the bottom, hot glue it down and then put some more jute webbing over the top. So this is how they turned out and I think they're so pretty and they're a different spin on a wreath. Again, I love wreaths, but I don't like to have them always be the exact same. I like a little bit of variety. So I think these turned out so pretty and springy. I love them and I hope you like them too. For 
for our next spring DIY. I love this project so much and it's so easy, but it's perfect for Pentecost or Lent or any time of year really. But all we're going to do is paint our pizza pan with our Waverly chalk paint in white. I love painting pizza pans and any kind of baking pan because you just throw it on there and just start painting away. So then I made a template out of some paper and just hand drew a dove and I will have this PDF linked in the description box below. Thank you brother. <laughs> So if you want to do this project, you can click on that link and it'll bring it up and you can print it out and then cut it out for this project or for any project for that matter. <laughs> so I just cut it out of the paper and then I placed it on my foam board and then I used a utility knife to cut that along the lines. Now the template doesn't have the scalloped edge at the bottom for his feathers, but that's okay. You can just do that part yourself. So now I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and sand down all the rough edges where I made those cut lines and then I'm going to take my chalk paint in white and I'm going to paint the entire piece and along the edges and it ends up really looking like a thin piece of wood. And then of course to give it that rustic look I'm going to outline it with a dry brush using my Waverly Wax in Antique. So now I'm going to take a bunch of skewers and dowels so that there's different widths and thicknesses and I'm just going to break off the pointy tips and then lay them out flat on a paper towel and then using my Waverly Wax I'm just going to start staining them and I'll roll them and I don't want them to be perfect. I like the look of the different colors and variations. So then I'm going to start placing them on my pizza pan using my hot glue and I'll just break them down and just start adding them kind of like a little bicycle wheel and just keep doing it so that we get a starburst and then once I go on to the next level I'll have some sticking over some that are shorter and you get the idea and then I'll take my pretty dove and hot glue that right to the center and then I'll make another hanger for the back of it and it is all done And here it is all finished and I love this so much and it was really a popular DIY. I had lots and lots of people emailing me asking for the PDF since I didn't know how to attach it. <laughs> but it's since gotten on there so it's available now. But I really love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next spring DIY, I'm going to be using this embroidery hoop and you can get these at Walmart for $2.97. This is a 10 inch, it's either 10 inch or 8 inch, I can't remember. But the ones at Walmart, they're 10 inch. So anyway, I'm going to use some Waverly Wax and Antique and just stain that all up and get it to a nice pretty wood tone. And then I'm going to take my happy metal sign from the Dollar Tree and just paint that white and then I'll just go over and give it some distressing. And then I have some scrap burlap and I'm gonna cut a little strip off because I don't have a whole lot, but it would still be cute if you did the whole thing, but I just wanted to do the strip along the middle. So I'm just gonna put it in there and tighten up my hoop and then cut off the excess. And then I'm gonna take some lamb's ear and hot glue that over towards the left and then just add some pretty Dollar Tree roses and just kind of bunch those up in the middle and anytime you see some extra stitching holes in some of the Dollar Tree flowers you can just cut those off and just go about your business and the same thing if you see some of those super dark tips I didn't really want that bright pink in this piece so I just cut those off and I do it kind of ziggity zaggity so that it looks like a petal and it doesn't look like just a straight cut across and then I'll add some more lamb's ear on the other side and then I'll take my metal word and hot glue that to my burlap and that is it. And here it is all finished. It was so cinchy, but oh so pretty. I love it and I hope you like it too.
For this DIY, I'm going to be making some wooden houses, and for the longest time I was never able to find any at my local Dollar Tree, so I had to resort to using some old scrap wood and my Michael J to cut down some houses. And as usual, he just listens to directions and I just tell him where to cut and he cuts it. So he's just going to make little houses, but like I said, if you can find these at the Dollar Tree, you can use this same process. But the good thing about using these wood pieces is that I was able to make them double sided. I was also able to have them cut to the size that I want, so I have a larger one and a smaller one that I can sit right in front of it. So once I got them cut down, I'm going to use my sanding sponge and just sand them down to get rid of any excess wood or pieces that I don't want on there. And then I'm going to use my Waverly Wax and Antique to cover the sides. And it was a little bit too dark because that was a rock cut and so it took it a little bit darker than I wanted to. So I used a little bit of white paint to make it a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to take some Aileen's Tacky Glue, or you could use Mod Podge, and then I'm going to take some paper that I think is from Hobby Lobby, but it was just in my paper stash, and I definitely am a paper hoarder, so who knows where I got this, but it's a coordinating pattern, and I thought it was super, super pretty. So I'm just going to place my paper where I want it on my houses, and then I'll push it down to make an indentation so that I see where to cut, and then using my sanding sponge again, I'm just going to sand those sides down so it's nice and flush and has a really clean edge. And then for the other side, I decided to use some coordinating fabric in this black and white buffalo check and gingham. And I'm going to use the same method, but I'm going to use Mod Podge this time. And I'll let it completely dry before I cut off the edges. And I don't go over either one of these on the top side with the glue or the Mod Podge because I just don't like that look and especially with these I wanted to keep it looking like fabric and like paper on the other side without that sheen. I do have the matte Mod Podge but it just always has a little bit of like a satin effect so I just didn't want that for this project. And also when you're putting down fabric that has a grid, in this case with the squares, you want to make sure that you keep those lines perfectly straight, otherwise it's really going to show. And then again, using my sanding sponge, I'm going to sand that down and give it a clean but frayed edge. So now I'm going to take a little Dollar Tree tag and I'm going to write stay on one and then home on the other and I'm using that downstroke method again. And I did this project originally right at the height of the quarantine so this was definitely a message that was useful for the time and kind of still is. So I'm just going to take some jute twine and wrap it around a few times and then I'll tie my tag onto it and make a sweet little bow. And I'm going to be sure to place them in a position where they can both be seen if they're staggered in front of each other. And then for the other side, I'm just going to use some lamb's ear and I'm cutting off the very tops of those stems, so those are the smaller leaves. And then I'm going to take a few of these mini satin roses that we all had, I think, in the 90s, and I'm going to hot glue those to the side, again making sure that they'll be seen when they're staggered in front of each other. And for these tags, I didn't want the stark white against this one, so I just cut a couple of tags out of some cardstock and used a hole punch to make a hole, and then I'll feed some jute twine in through them and tie that to the twine that's already wrapped around. And here's the black and white set and I love how these turned out and they go with everything. These are perfect for tiered trays or pretty much anywhere on a shelf or bookcase. And the farmhouse sign behind it I made in another DIY so I'll have that video sliding across about now. And then here's the pink set along with our happy wreath. This vignette just makes my eyes so happy and I hope you guys like it too. 
for this next project. This really is a trash to treasure. I'm going to be using this kitty litter box. We don't have kitties, but this was from my mother-in-law who always had kitties. And so I'm just going to take it apart. And I first tried to get off the writing with some acetone. I don't think it really would have mattered because the chalk paint usually covers so well. So I'm just going to paint it completely white and give it a couple of coats and then I'm going to take my chalk paint in ink and then paint the handle because I don't want to see any of that blue. And then I am going to be wrapping the top part with some jute twine but just in case anything peeks out I don't want to see that blue. And then I did paint the lid as well. So now I'm going to measure the top and I'm going to make a decal for the front of this and I'm not going to show you everything but I am so proud of myself for making this. I think this is such a pretty design and again it will be available in my Etsy shop. So now I'm going to take that jute twine and I'm going to wrap the handle of my handle. <laughs> And I'm just using some hot glue and then just wrapping it all the way around and then hot gluing it again. And then I'll replace the handle onto my bucket. And then I'm going to take some buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby. And I get this at Christmas time for $5. It's normally $9.99 and so you get it half off at certain times. And then I'm just going to tie a knot on the side, dovetail the ends. And then I'm going to place a rose on there. And the rose stuck out a little bit too much, so I just took it apart and then hot glued each section on one at a time. And that'll help to make it a little bit flatter. And here it is all finished and I think this is so pretty. I love storage. This would be perfect to put your dog food in and you'd have it right there and wouldn't even be able to tell what it is. I love it and I hope you like it too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we've got a lot of pieces here, but this is one of the easiest projects and it's one of my favorites too. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the painting as usual and I'm going to paint my cake pan completely white and I poured a little bit too much in there but that's always fun, it's like finger painting. And then we're going to take our round mirror and flip over the back so that the mirror is facing the opposite direction of the frame. And then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and paint that entire mirror and that whole front side. This is going to become the front of our scale. So then I went to this blog called my so-called DIY blog and printed out this scale face on my computer. And I will have that linked in the description box below so if you want to do this project you can print this out and go to this blog and you'll be able to do that for free. So then I used a little bit of chalk paint to distress the face of this and then I'm going to use my Mod Podge to apply it to the back side which is the front of our mirror and it's actually the mirror underneath our scale face. And then I'm going to take some E6000 and very carefully go around the edge of where my plastic plate is going to be placed so that it's right at the very edges and you won't be able to see it. And then I took a little spinner from a game and I just pulled that off and then popped that right on top of the plate. And then I'm only going to be using the chain from the hanging basket, but since it's already got the three areas where the chain was hanging and I know they're equidistant, I'm going to use that as a guide to know where to put my holes. And this is pre crocodile so I'm having to use my big fat nail to make those holes. And then with the chain, I'm going to take the very top hook and I'm going to open it up and attach that to the bottom of my scale which I forgot to tell you, I turned the back side around so that the place where you would normally hang the mirror is going to be towards the bottom so that we could hang that hook. So now we're going to take some Waverly chalk paint in ink and do the enamel wear effect and just go around the edges with your sponge brush and then make those little chippy marks everywhere. And I usually wait until after I've done my lines because chances are I'm going to kind of get wobbly and then I can just make that into the chippy mark. So now for the top of my scale I'm going to take another one of those planter hooks and I'm just going to leave a little bit of chain on that and that's going to go at the top of my scale and I'm just going to open up a link and then stick it in between the cardboard and the frame and then I'll add some hot glue and some E6000 so that it stays in place. 
so now I'm going to attach my chain using the little hooks that come with the planter and I'll just slip those through the three holes and I want to make sure that the chain is the exact same length on all three so that it doesn't hang crookedy and then I'm going to take one link and make all three of those come together in that one link and then close it up and hang it from that bottom hook. And here it is all finished and I love how this turned out. I have this on my wall just temporarily using some command hooks and a bracket. You can see here it's not really attached. This ended up going to my sister-in-law. She wanted this and so I gave it to her. I have a lot of people ask me what I do with all of my crafts and the majority of items if I don't keep it for myself I give it away or donate it or use it in room makeovers in some way but they pretty much all get used so this is a little hard to film because it's so long but I think you get the idea it was super easy but it's oh so cute but I love it and I hope you guys like it too for this Dollar Tree Spring DIY I'm gonna need a branch and I'm using this one that I pulled out of an arrangement from my dad's funeral so this is a really special little DIY that I came up with and I'm going to be using the outside frame from this Dollar Tree canvas and I'm just using my flathead screwdriver to remove all of the staples and the sawtooth hanger. And then I'm going to take my little birdie and I love painting these birds with the glitter on them because it gives it a texture that looks like concrete or stone. So I just pull off his little wings and that really hurts me when I do that. And I'm gonna take off the clip after I'm done painting him because I can hold on to that while I'm painting the top part and then I'll pull it out and then paint his little tummy. So now I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk paint in white and paint my frame completely and then I'll use my sanding sponge to get that all nice and distressed. And then I'll replace the wings on my birdie and get his little eyeballs to be black because somebody was saying they like to see the little black eyeballs. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my twig and I'm going to cut it down to the size that I need so that it'll fit right inside of my frame. And it's good to have a frame that's kind of thick so that you have a little room to work with and you can still hang it against the wall but everything will still be inside of the frame. So once I got my branch in there, I'm going to take a little bit of Spanish moss and hot glue that to the thicker part of the branch and then set my little birdie right on top of that. And then I'm going to take a black chalkboard tag and write be still and no and then I'm going to write Psalm 46. Well, I'm going to write Psalm 46:19 for some reason. I don't know why, but it should be Psalm 46:10. And I had a few viewers when I first put this video out that called me on that. <laughs> But I have since corrected it and actually I sent this project to my sweet friend Olivia at Olivia's Romantic Home when we did our collaboration during the summer. So anyway, I'm going to add some greenery inside of my frame. I'll put a couple of little tiny flowers on the top part of my tag and then I'll attach that to the top left of my frame and it is done. And I think this is so sweet. and. You can either hang this on the wall or you can have it on the countertop. So either way, it's super pretty. It's oh so springy. This one reminds me of my dad. I love it and I hope you like it too. For this DIY I'm going to be using three terracotta pots and three saucers and I got these from Walmart last year because I was never able to find the larger ones at the Dollar Tree and I've never seen the saucers at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white and paint my pots and my saucers completely white including the bottoms and then I'm going to take this metal sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut it down into little strips so that I can make tags for the fronts of my pots. And so all I'm going to do is just measure the lip of my pot and then cut that down. And I'm just using regular scissors because this is pretty thin. And I think I may have even sharpened my scissors by doing this project. <laughs> so once I get them cut out, I'm going to write basil, thyme, and sage. And then I'm going to take my big fat nail and make holes on both sides. 
And again, this is before I had my crop -a dial which would have made super easy work of this. And then for the sides, I'm gonna take some white thumbtacks from the Dollar Tree and just cut the little pokey part off of there using some wire cutters. And there's still a little teeny piece that stays on there, but that's perfect because once I put my hot glue on there, there's something to grab onto once I stick it into the holes on the side of my tags. And then I'm going to put some glass rocks from the Dollar Tree at the bottom of my pots for some drainage. And then I'll put in my actual herbs that Michael J. went to the grocery store and got for me. And I had a little helper helping me to plant these. And these were done. Now I did leave these in there for a while. And they did last a little while. But you know I have kind of a black thumb. So it didn't last too terribly long. But they did get a little stained because I did put the dirt directly into the pots. And so I think if I would have left them in the smaller containers that they come in, it would have lasted a little longer. And also, it does say that this paint is non-toxic. So I'm still here. I just did the sign of the cross. But I love these and I hope you like them too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're doing a trash to treasure using this super large dill pickle jar. And I'm just going to have some things from the Dollar Tree that scream spring with some bunnies and some eggs and all kinds of fun goodies. And so I'm going to clean my pickle jar really well and get that smell out of there. And then I'm going to get all of my items ready to paint. So first I'll paint my jar lid in the Waverly white chalk paint. And then I'm going to paint my terracotta pot in the white as well. And then I'm going to paint my bunnies and my eggs. And I'll cut the bunny tail off first before I paint him. And then I'll get him all nice and white. But then after I get all of the base white color on everything, I'm going to go back in with my lavender chalk paint and start giving it a pretty purple blended finish. And on our tiny little Easter eggs, they have kind of a pattern on there. And so I just went with those patterns and just dragged my brush around so that it would follow that design and just made them all individual and different but still coordinating because of the color and then on my sweet little bunnies I'm just gonna give them a tiny bit of kind of a patina look with that purple and I did one a little bit lighter and the other one a little bit darker because one's a boy and one's a girl and then on one of the small eggs I just made some tiny little rosebuds by swirling some lavender and white together and even though I'm no artist I think they look like little flowers and I'll show that to you in a second. So then I'm going to take my Spanish moss and fill my jar about a quarter of the way and then I'm going to dress up my bunnies using some jute twine with a teeny tiny little purple flower and I'm leaving all of them on their skewers that they came on and then I'll just break those down to the size that I need them to be. And then I'm going to place my little pot inside, add some more of that moss, and then I'll start placing my eggs inside the pot and all around. And then I'll place my two little bunnies facing each other because they're in love. And then I'm going to take my little egg that I started with my roses on and I'm going to add some celery chalk paint to make teeny tiny little leaves. And I'll place that in there as well. And then I'm going to take some lavender stems from Walmart and I'm just going to cut those down and place them around our little garden area. So now I'm going to take this pretty lavender and purple butterfly from the spring bouquet from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to take a teeny bit of hot glue at the tip of his wing and put it in the back part of our spring scene. And then for the top of our jar, I have this lid from the splatter screen from the Dollar Tree and I just took it apart by unscrewing the screw and then hot gluing it to the very top of our jar. And here it is all finished and I don't know about you but I love looking at scenes inside of a jar or a bottle or anything miniature. For some reason it just takes me back to my childhood. I absolutely love this and I hope you guys like it too.
so we are just doing our part in recycling and so I'm doing another trash to treasure and I'm using this empty vodka bottle. I'm not sure whose it is but it's not mine. <laughs> but I just removed the label and then I'm using this canvas bunny that I cut out and you'll see the other part where I use this in another DIY coming up but I'm just gonna lay it on the front part of my bottle and then using my Waverly chalk paint in white I'm gonna paint all around it and I'm okay if it's not super crisp lines I want that to kind of be a little bit bumpy so that it gives it the look of like his hair and then I'm gonna take some of this cottony filler in this pretty lavender color, and you could use the shredded grass that Dollar Tree has. I have no idea where I had this or where I got it, but it was the perfect color, so I decided to use it. So I'm just gonna fill that in so that you can see it coming through from the shape of the bunny inside of the jar. And then I'm gonna take some lavender ribbon that I think is from Michaels, and I'm just gonna fold that over into a sweet little bow and let the tails hang really long and then I'll dovetail those ends and attach it to the top part of my bottle. And then I'm gonna take some lavender and some lamb's ear and pop that right into the top and it is done. And here it is all done and I think this is just so sweet and springy and super simple but I love it and I hope you guys like it too. So in keeping with our recycling trash to treasures, I'm going to be duping this sweet DIY that I did a while back using this cascade bucket and I'm just going to pull off the top rim of the lid and it just comes off real easy once you start it with the scissors because there's already a line there. And then I'm going to take some foam cord board and cut that out to get the same size and shape as my lid. And then I'm going to use a sanding sponge to sand that down and then I'm going to paint my entire bucket white as well as that foam board because I want that same finish as the bucket so that when I attach it, it looks like the same material is being used. So now I'm going to take that strap and use that as the handle. So I'll paint that with my Waverly chalk paint in white as well. And then I'm going to take a spool and hot glue that down to the bottom of my bucket to give me a riser and then I won't have to use as much floral foam and then I'll put a piece of floral foam on the top of that and then reattach my handle on both sides of my bucket. So now I'm going to take some white satin ribbon and I'm just going to run that around the entire top of my bucket so that it covers up those grooves and it doesn't look like a detergent bucket. <laughs> and then I'm going to take some of this striped ribbon that was in my original thrift treasure project and just hot glue that around the front side since I ran out and that was all I had left. And then I'll take some hot glue quite a bit and attach the lid to the back of my bucket. And then I'm just going to start poking in some pretty Dollar Tree greenery as well as some Walmart eucalyptus and baby's breath. And I really want it to kind of hang out and be nice and bountiful. And because I can still see some of that foam peeking through, I'm going to take some Spanish moss and just poke it into the bottom of my bucket to cover that up. And this is a great way to use all of your scraps from prior projects because it doesn't take a whole lot to fill this bucket up.
So then I took my paint pen from Walmart and I'm gonna write hope at the very bottom left hand corner and I'm gonna kind of do it in a Ray Dunn font as well as I can anyway. And then on the handle on the right side, I'm gonna write Isaiah 40, 31. And that scripture says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And that was the perfect scripture for this time because at this time of year last year, we were just going through a terrible time with the whole coronavirus and the pandemic and people needed hope. We always need hope, but especially at that time, it was definitely needed. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, I am a super fan of the tiered trays and this version from Farmhouse Fresh Home was one I really wanted to try and duplicate. So I tried to get what I could to make it as close to the real thing as I possibly could. And so I'm just going to take some of these kneelers in the gardening section and I'm just going to cut those down into one inch strips. So I took them out to my miter saw and had them cut down by my personal handyman Michael J. And so I'm going to use a utility knife to kind of separate them and make them go around my pizza pan and a plaque that Dollar Tree had. So I'm just going to use some E6000 and some hot glue to attach those together and then if you have any seepage from your glue I just use my utility knife again to get that off of there so it wouldn't show. I do want this to be kind of rustic looking like the original that I showed you so I do want to have some of the areas where I attach my foam together to show so it looks like the wood of that original piece. So I'm just going to bend those and make it fit around those circles and then I'm going to take some spatula to fill in those seams to give it that lifted wood ledge that I'm going for. And then I had an old candle holder that was broken and I had Michael J cut that down for me to the size that I wanted. And then before I put it all together, I'm going to paint it all completely white using my Waverly chalk paint. And then I'm going to go back in with some ink and get that all nice and distressed. And I'm just using a super dry brush to do that. And so I'll do that to all of the parts of this tray. And for the top, I'm going to be using an old salt shaker. And then I'm also going to be making the pieces that are going to go onto our tiered tray for spring. So I found this little house at the Goodwill, but I think it was originally from the Target dollar spot, and I'm going to be jumping around on all of these little projects that are going to go on our tray because I'm doing them all at the same time. So now I'm going to take this little picture from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to pop the back out and then I'm going to find some pretty paper to coordinate with everything that we're going to be using. And in this case we're going to be doing greens and whites. So I found this pretty gingham or buffalo check fabric in my stash and I think it looks so pretty all together with the lamb's ear. So I'm going to paint the back of my frame just to make sure that there's no brown peeking through if you can see this tray from all sides. And then once I paint that, I'm going to take the same white and I'll just go over my frame itself and just kind of do a dry brush and lighten that up so that it matches our entire vignette. And then I'll paint one of these little foam bunnies and I just leave them on the skewer so it just makes it easier to paint. And then I'll paint four of my Amazon wood beads for the feet of our tray and then an inside drawer part of a box that I had left over from a prior DIY. I'll paint that white and then I'm going to go back on everything and give it a little green patina using my celery chalk paint. And then I'm going to paint some of these medium sized eggs and I'll just start with the white and I'll add in the green. Again just following along the lines of that pattern that's already on the eggs. 
and I just think this looks so pretty and it gets all nice and blended if you do it while the white is still wet. So now I'm going to take this wood medallion that was on our sign and I'm going to just pull off the paper and it had a really pretty balsa wood finish on it or whatever. I don't even know if that's what it is, but it was really pretty. So I decided to try and use that as the stripe, kind of like you would see on those really pretty signs. And I'll just paint the top and the bottom with that celery and white mixture, leaving some of that wood showing in the middle. And then we're going to jump back over to our house and I'm going to paint the roof with a little bit darker green. And then I'm going to take a teeny bit and put a little bit of shadow around those windows. And then I'm going to go back to my sign and I'm going to cut out a piece of my scrapbooking paper in that pretty green pattern and I'm going to hot glue that to the front of my sign and then I'll put that back into our frame. And then I'm going to take my little bunny and dress him up by giving him a jute twine sweet little bow and then I'll take a teeny tiny flower and hot glue that right in the middle. And then I'll reattach his little bumper and then hot glue him into the middle of our frame. So now I'm going to take my black paint pen and I'm going to write home on the front of my little house and then I'll take another little flower and put that in place of my O. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of that scrapbooking paper and I'll just hot glue that in behind the flower cutout and then fill it with some pretty lamb's ear. So now I'm going to take a cardboard egg carton and I'm just going to cut out a few of these egg holes or egg chairs. I don't know what they would be called <laughs> anyway, the little pieces. And I did for four eggs and then I'm going to put some Spanish moss in there and make little nests for them and just stick those right inside. And then I'm going to paint yet another bird and then I took the back part of a cross from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to run some jute twine in through the holes. The front part had a wooden cross on it and I used that for a another DIY and then I'll tie that on the back and I gave it a little dabbing of some chalk paint so that it would soften it and make it less shiny. Now I'm going to take some white string from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to run some Amazon beads on there and make a beaded garland and I put a loop at one end and tied a knot and then strung my beads and then I'm going to drill a hole into my medallion and then feed that onto the string and then tie a knot on top of that. And then on my medallion, I'm going to take my black paint pen again and write the word risen in cursive. And I may have already said this, but I will have these Amazon beads linked in the description box below. So then I took a jar lid and I'm going to take some more of the green moss and just make a little nest by putting some hot glue inside and then just glue around the edges as well and I'll leave it flat on the bottom so that it can sit on top of my tray. And then just to add a little bit more cuteness, I'm going to put some of that Spanish moss on top and then I'll take the clip that's on the bottom of the birdie and just clip him on in there. Now I'm going to put my tray together, so I'm going to put my beads on the bottom and I put four and just measured them to make sure that they were equidistant apart. And then I'm going to take my candle holder and find the center of my bottom tray and then use some E6000 and some hot glue. And the E6000 is for the permanent long term hold and then the hot glue is for the immediate hold. And then I'm going to place my top tray on top of that candle holder and then I'll add my salt shaker on top of that. So now I'm going to take that super pretty green and white gingham fabric and I'm just going to fold it over and kind of make a cone shape and I'm using my fabric adhesive from Walmart and I'm just going to go down the long side and then roll it over and just press it in place and then once it dries I'm going to pull it inside out so that that seam will be on the inside. And 
then to help get the little pointy part out, I'm going to use a skewer and get it nice and pointed. And then I'm going to take some fiber fill and fill up my carrots. Did I tell you these were carrots? So these are carrots and they're going to get nice and stuffed. And then I'm going to take some lamb's ear and stuff it inside so that's the top part of my carrot. And then I'll take some cotton string and tie a sweet little bow right around the top. So then I printed out this cute little bunny from the internet and I just googled bunny silhouette and came up with this one and then printed it out on my computer and then I'm going to take a canvas from the Dollar Tree and trace him out right in the middle of that canvas and then I'm going to use a utility knife to cut that out and this is the bunny that we used in the bottle DIY but for this project we're just using the canvas without the bunny there. So then I took some Mod Podge and I'm going to go over the front and back and over the edges and then I'm going to take some of that gingham fabric and put it on the back side of my canvas and then put some more Mod Podge on top so that it stays nice and flat. And then I'm going to get a little pom-pom and put it on his bum and then I'll take a piece of jute twine, make a sweet little bow and put that on his neck to dress him up and then I'll put a flower in the middle of that and then just to give it a little more cuteness I'm going to take some white grosgrain ribbon and hot glue that to the bottom of my canvas. And here's how all 10 of these DIYs turned out. And I have to say that I think my favorite color is whichever one I'm working with because I absolutely love this green. It's so soft and clean and fresh and just perfect for springtime. And I'll show you what it all looks like on the tray, but I love how this turned out and I hope you guys like them too. For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be using another fun spring color and we're using yellow and I have no idea why I'm up so close to these flowers. But for this DIY, I just took some of these drawers and we're just going to be using the outside parts. So I'm going to paint them all using my Waverly chalk paint in white and then I'm going to give them a little bit of distressing with my black and do the dry brush effect over all of them. Originally I had planned for this to be two-sided and one side was going to say Easter and one side was going to be spring, but then I had another idea so I'm just going to be doing spring. So I'm going to take my poster letters and just stick them right onto the front side of my boxes once I determine which is the best looking side and then I'm going to place them all together side by side. And then I'm going to take some scrap floral foam and just cut those down and put them into my boxes so that I can put my flowers in once we're done. And then I'm going to fill those boxes with moss to cover up that floral foam and then I'm just going to start poking in my pretty yellow flowers. And I forgot what kind those first ones are but the second ones are crocuses.
And then I'm going to take a metal trellis and cut that off at the bottom and I'll adhere my boxes using the E6000 and the hot glue and place those side by side. Here you can see where one side was going to say Easter and it was going to be double sided. But I changed it up and I think it's way cuter. So after I get my boxes all together, I'm going to place my trellis on the back and then just use some painter's tape to hold it in place while I work. And then I'm going to take some of that burlapfabric.com jute webbing. This was the perfect material to keep it all in place and get my trellis to stay put. So I just gobbed on the glue and got that stuck on the back and then the jute webbing keeps it all nice and secure. So now I'm going to make a perky bow using the fold over method and I'm using my black and white buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to make three loops on each side and then fold it in half and use a chenille stem to keep it together and twist it in the back and then I'll foof out my loops, dovetail my ends and attach that to the top of my trellis. And then I found a sweet little bell from a windmill sign and I'm just going to put that right at the top of my trellis. And here it is all finished and I think this is so pretty and I love this yellow it just makes me so happy and it matches all of the vignette that I did in the original video of course I'll have that linked in the description box below if you want to see the rest of those but I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too So now we're going to change gears again and get back into our neutral color theme. And so I'm using a Dollar Tree hanging plant and then a saucer and I put that inside and then I turn down two of the little rings and then cut one of them off and then I'm going to place some Spanish moss on top of the saucer. And then I'm going to be using three of those larger styrofoam eggs and on one I started peeling the stuff off so I didn't have any of that texture but that ended up being a little too time consuming. <laughs> so I ended up just sanding off some of that glitter and the goodies that were on the other eggs. So now I'm gonna use some adhesive pearls and some jewel border stickers and I'm just gonna adhere those onto one of my eggs and then I'm gonna use some pretty white and creamy brown paint mixed together and I'll paint the entire egg and let that get all nice and blended and darker in some spots and lighter in others. Then I'm going to take an old book and I just started pulling out some of the pages and ripping them apart and then I used my Mod Podge to attach that to my egg. And this one I had first painted white just to give it a nice clean base and then I put my Mod Podge on top of all of my paper. And then for our third egg, I'm going to take some Dollar Tree lace and cut it in strips and then I'm going to paint my egg with some more of that creamy beige color, a little bit darker so that you could see it through that lace. And then I'm going to hot glue two strips onto my egg and then I'm going to take some jute twine and wrap it around from the bottom and continue wrapping until I cover the edge of my lace. And then I'll hot glue that down and stop and then I'll go in the middle where that opening is and then I'll do the top. And then it was a little bit too dark the way it was so I decided to go in with some white chalk paint to lighten it up and just kind of soften it so it would go better with the other two. And then I had just enough of this burlapfabric.com ribbon to make a perky bow and place it right on the side of my basket and then I put my eggs in and it was done. And here it is all finished and I love these colors, I love the softness. I love everything about this and I hope you like it too.
For our next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm making this round plaque, and this is pretty much for Easter or spring or pretty much any time of the year. But I'm using this round wooden plaque that I haven't seen in a long time from the Dollar Tree. But I'm just going to take my painter's tape, and after I sand it, I'm going to make a line about two inches wide, and then I'm going to take my white chalk paint and paint that stripe in between the tape. And then once it's dry, I'm going to take the tape off and add two more pieces of tape inside of that line. And on that second color, I'm going to add a little bit of lavender to a whole lot of white so it's a super, super light lavender. So now I'm going to cut out my decal and I'm cutting out the words, the tomb was empty. And for the tomb, I'm going to use the font, the skinny, and for was empty, I'm going to use the font hand snow. So I'll place the tomb at the top left and then was empty right in that white line. Then I'm going to make another perky bow and I'm going to place that at the top of my sign. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lamb's ear just to give it some more cuteness. And then to hang it, I'll just use some jute twine and hot glue that on to the back of the sign. And here it is all pretty and in my frame that I have some chicken wire behind. I love this so much. This is the whole message of Easter and what it's all about. I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to be making another wreath for Easter. And remember, you can always use whatever colors work for you, but in this case, I'm using purple again, which commemorates the season of Lent. So I'm going to be using these boxwood picks from Walmart, and they're 97 cents for quite a bit. And I'm just going to cut those down and start wiring them to my 12 inch wreath. And then once it's all nice and full, I'm going to go in with my Dollar Tree pansies and plumerias and then some of the lavender, which is also from Walmart, and just start filling this in and covering up as much of that wire as I possibly can. So now I want to add a big perky bow to my wreath, but I didn't have any purple patterned ribbon of any sort, so I decided to try and make my own, and I'm using the 5 8 Dollar Tree Lavender Grow Grain Ribbon, and I'm just going to hot glue that to their 2 inch burlap ribbon just to kind of give it a little bit of something. So I'm going to use the fold over method like you've seen me do before, and then I'm going to foof it out and then attach it to my wreath. And then ultimately I'll make another smaller little bow to add to the middle using that same lavender grow grain ribbon. So now I'm going to take this super pretty plaque from the Dollar Tree and it says Easter Blessings and I guess they know the liturgical church colors for Lent. <laughs> so I'm just going to take it and use some more of that paddle wire and attach it to the right side of my wreath form and then I'll hot glue it on the back just to give it some more security. And then I'll make that smaller grow grain ribbon bow and place that in the middle of the larger one just to give it a little more purple. And here it is all finished and I think this is so purpley pretty. Of course you can use any color that you want but I was going with the colors that were in that sign but I think this would be so so pretty in whites and off whites. Just whatever works with your decor and whatever colors you like. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too.
For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be recycling again and using some tin cans that I had on hand. And this was actually inspired by the beautiful candles that I found at Dollar Tree in that pretty, pretty lavender color. So the first thing I did was found some different canisters and took the lids and the bottom parts just to give these cans different levels so they aren't all at the same height. And I have a little helper again. This is Cadence and her silly hands. So I'm just going to take some E6000 and some hot glue and put my tin cans upside down on top of these risers. And then I'm going to paint them using my Waverly chalk paint in white. And then once I get those all painted, I'm going to use some sandpaper and get those all nice and distressed and let some of that aluminum show through. So now I'm going to take some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and just cover up all of that seepage from that hot glue and cover that up and just hot glue it in the back, make sure it's all nice and secure. And then I'm going to take some Walmart lavender and just pull those stems apart, make cute little bunches for the bottom of the cans and then just hot glue those on. And then I'll take some jute twine and wrap that around a few times and then tie a sweet little bow at the bottom of my lavender. And here they are all finished and I love candles but I really love these especially during Lent. You could use these of course all year through but especially at Lent. And having four candles can represent the 40 days of Lent which is the amount of time that Jesus spent in the desert before he started his ministry. And here I've put it all together with the other projects I did in this particular video. But I think this makes for a super pretty Lenten vignette. I love it and I hope you like it too. For our next spring DIY, I'm going to be using three of Dollar Tree's tall candles and we do these all the time, but this is just another way that you can use what you have at home just to give these a little spring look. So I'm taking some linen ribbon and I get this from burlapfabric.com and then just some regular burlap also from burlapfabric.com, but of course you can use whatever you have available. And then I'm taking a brown paper bag and I'm going to cut it down to give it a third layer. And I just think that layering different textures and ribbons just gives it such a pretty look. And then finally I took some cotton string and just tied a sweet little bow around the front. And then I'm just going to take some greenery from the Dollar Tree, cut that down. And instead of using these as a candle, which you could totally do, I'm going to stick them inside and use them as vases. And here they are, all ready for spring, and I just think these are so pretty, and anything in sets of three is always very pleasing to the eye and super popular in interior design, but I love how these turned out, and I hope you like them too. For this spring project, I'm going to be using a rug from the Dollar Tree and then some placemats from burlapfabric.com, but to make this a total Dollar Tree DIY, you could just use the other side of this same rug and use that in place of our placemats. But all I'm going to do is take those little felt bunnies and I'm going to draw them out on the back side of my rug and then cut them out and that's what we're going to be putting onto our pillows. So then I took some striped ribbon from the burlapfabric.com and made three sweet little bows that I'm going to attach to my bunnies. Now you could put these all at the top so that they look like girls. You could put them all in the middle so they look like bow ties and boys. Or in my case, I'm going to use two at the top making girls and one boy bow tie because that's what I have for our kids. <laughs> 
So now we're going to be making the pillow part and I'm going to overlap my placemats and pin them down and this is going to be the back side but what I'm trying to do right now is get the area of where I want my bunnies to be to make sure they're in the right spot. So I'll pin this all down and then open up that front flap so that I can attach these bunnies. So I'm going to do this three different ways to give you three different options. The first way is kind of the most time consuming but I'm going to be using my sewing machine and I'm just going to go around the outside of my bunny and then the second way would be to just take a needle and thread and baste it onto your placemat or rug or whatever you're using as your pillow and then the third way is the easiest way of all I'm just using some fabric tack from Walmart and I'll get that bunny placed on there And then once they're all attached, I'm going to sew down that side seam and then fill it with some fiber fill and then close it back up on that other side. Now everywhere where you're seeing me use my sewing machine, you can absolutely use hot glue or fabric tack or whatever is easiest for you. Now these instructions may be clear as mud, but if you go back to the original video, I'll have all of the detailed information of how to make this and it might be a little more clear, especially since I'm having to talk so quickly. <laughs> And you can see here where I still have the straight pins in that back flap. That's because I'm leaving that open so that if this gets dirty, I can just pull the fiber fill out and wash the cover. Or if the fiber fill gets a little too flat, I can always add more and make it nice and perky once again. And here it is all finished and I just think this is so stinking cute and it's just the perfect colors for my couch with the off-whites and pretty beige tones and I'll always think of my kids when I look at this pillow but I love it and I hope you guys like it too. A huge fan of all things cloches and glass domes and I love making little scenes inside of them and you can see here that this piece has seen its days but it's got a crack and I don't care though I'm gonna still use it because most of it will be covered up so for this Dollar Tree DIY I'm gonna make a sweet spring scene and I'm using the bunny from this sign and I'm just gonna use my craft knife and cut him apart and break him away from that Easter sign and then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in white and get him all nice and painted on both sides. And then I'm going to take a little bit of elephant and white and make some gray tones on my eggs. And I'm just doing the same thing that you've seen me do with the other small eggs and following along those lines. And then I'll make some polka dots and different patterns just to get them in the same color palette but having different designs. But this way they'll all be coordinated. So now I'm going to make a grassy little base and I'm using a lid from some cheese actually and taking my Spanish moss and I'm just going to glue that around all of the sides so it's nice and covered and then to get my bunny to stay in place I'm going to use a Jenga piece and glue that to the bottom of my lid and then I'll glue my bunny to the Jenga piece and then I'll cover it all up with some more of that Spanish moss. So now I'm going to cut off a few of these stems from this Dollar Tree Spring Floral Bouquet and I'm just going to start poking them into that grassy moss. And I also put a little pom-pom on his bum to give him a tail. And then I'm going to take some jute twine and just wrap that around about four or five times and give him a little bow around his neck. And then when I tie it on the back, because this will be two-sided, I'll just tie it in a sweet little bow because that side will show. And then I'm going to start adding my eggs and I just mix and match the different patterns and designs so that it's nice and evenly spread, you know, so that the colors are evenly distributed. And then I'm just going to add some baby's breath and some pretty miniature little berries and then I'll slip my dome right over it.
and here it is all finished and I just think this is so sweet and I love these neutral colors with a little bit of color mixed in there for spring. Again this is a mismatch set so it's not even supposed to go together and I think this is a princess house dome and then just a little cake plate that I had in a set and I really think that anything that goes under a cloche or a dome just makes it even more important and special. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next spring Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to get a super sharp craft knife and I'm going to cut a stove burner right in half using a straight edge. And this is pretty thin metal, so it doesn't take a whole lot to get through it, but you do want to be careful not to cut yourself with those jaggedy ends or the sharp edges. So I'm just going to get it started with some wire cutters and then I'm going to use my scissors to cut it the rest of the way. And then once I get it in half, I'm going to take my cake pan and I'm going to measure out where that curve is of the lip of the pan. And then using my big heavy cutters, I'm just going to make some slits along that curve so that I can wrap it around the ledge of that cake pan and then bend them over so that they're attached to the front or the top of our cake pan. And then for the straight edge, I'm going to use some pliers and pull that ledge over, kind of fold it down so that's also going to get rid of that sharp edge. And then once I get everything folded over, I'm going to pull that front piece off again and cut down my tabs so that it fits snug as a bug in a rug right under the lip of the cake pan. And then I'll use a small hammer to tap all of those tabs down and so they're nice and flush. So now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and just cover the fronts of my pans and I just thought this would help with any chipping issues that might happen from the chalk paint being on metal. And then I'm going to paint this with my Waverly chalk paint in white, in elephant, and some truffle. And I just want to give this that galvanized metal look. So I'm just going to be pouncing instead of brushing my paint on. And then once I get it to the look I want, I'm going to go in with my Waverly chalk paint in ink and distress all of the edges and give it even fewer pounces so that it looks like that galvanized metal. And then I'll add just a little bit more white to soften everything up. So now I'm going to take some more of that one inch linen ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I love this ribbon so much but of course you can use whatever you have or whatever works with your colors and your decor and I'm just going to hot glue that all the way around the edge of my pan. And then I'm going to take some chain and pull off the links and make it the length that I need and then I'm going to glue that on both sides of my pan so that it hangs nice and straight and I'll just put some hot glue down and it fits perfectly inside of that little rig. So now to fill these pretty planters with some springtime freshness, I'm going to use some Dollar Tree greenery and some sunflowers in white. And then I'll make another sweet little bow with that same linen ribbon and attach that to the side. And here's how they turned out and I love these so much. Now my friend Heidi Sambel over at Heidi Sambel DIY told me that they had them at the Dollar Tree just like this without the greenery of course. But if you can find these babies for a dollar I would definitely say pick those up. Of course there's always something special about having things that are handmade but in this case I'd say just go ahead and buy a couple. <laughs> but I love how these turned out and I hope you like them too.
For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be making a sweet spring watering can and this is so super easy. All I did was just painted my entire can with my Waverly chalk paint in white and then I'm going to go back in with my ink or black chalk paint and then using a makeup sponge, I'm just going to go around the edges and give it that enamelware look. And then every now and then I'm just going to make a little spot to replicate the chip marks that you see in authentic enamelware. So now I'm going to measure the area that I want to put my decal on and I'm using the font called the skinny. I use that quite a bit here. It really has that Ray Dunn inspired look. And ever since I saw Shannon at the Daily DIYer use this some years ago, I've been hooked ever since. So then I'm going to glue in some floral foam from the Dollar Tree and then stick in some really pretty pink roses and different flowers from the Dollar Tree. And then I'll take another perky bow and attach that to the handle. And here it is all finished and you can see I added some additional Dollar Tree white flowers and then a little bit of lamb's ear from Walmart. I forgot how pretty this is and I have really bad lighting in this clip but even with that bad lighting I think this arrangement just brightens everything up. I love it and I hope you guys like it too. For our next springtime Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be celebrating the true meaning of Easter by making a wreath and I'm going to take three of these incense holders from the Dollar Tree and using a sharp craft knife, I'm just going to kind of score it down at an angle. Again, be careful that you don't lose any of your phalanges because that would be bad, but I just want to kind of get a pretty deep crevice in there so that I can eventually break it off and make it be pointed at one end and thick on the other. And I'm trying to get these to resemble large nails for the side of our wreath. So I'm going to be making three of those and then I'm going to take some blooming branches from the Dollar Tree and these really never quite appealed to me but in this project it works out perfectly because they kind of remind me of the crown of thorns. So I'm just going to cut those down and place them at the bottom of my wreath and then using some paddle wire I'm going to attach them into place. And then I didn't have any other purple ribbon, same problem that I had before. So I'm just going to be using some of this sheer purple ribbon that I believe is from Michaels. One of my viewers said they saw it at Michaels. My friend gave it to me, so that's why I don't know where some of these items are from. So then I'm going to take some burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and make another perky bow and I'll attach that one right on top of the purple one. So now I'm going to take my nails and I'm going to hot glue those to the side of my wreath and I'm just going to kind of crisscross them and make them all be able to be seen and then I'll get my bow attached to the bottom of my wreath and get those loops all foofed out and looking pretty and then remember the green two-tier spring tray that we did and I had this metal cross? Well this was the project where I used the inside portion or the wooden portion of that cross. So I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter and less brown by adding some watered down white chalk paint and I'll just go over it and dab it off so that it makes it a little bit lighter and softer and then I'll just hot glue that right to the middle of my nails. And here it is all finished and ah, there's just something about making projects like this. Anytime it's all about Jesus when you're in your craft room and listening to worship music and meditating on the word, just spending some one-on-one -on -one time loving on Jesus, that's the best kind of craft of all. Anyway, I love this and I hope you guys like it too.
This next DIY just makes my eyes so happy because we're using some super pretty green coordinating paper and I think it's from the line called Dots, but all I'm going to do is take two of the terracotta Dollar Tree pots and I'm just going to paint them white and then I'm going to take a bunny off of one of those Dollar Tree signs and I actually had done another project with another one so I'm going to use him and just change him up a little bit, undress him and then we're going to use some Mod Podge and cover him all up and then using that scrapbooking paper I'm going to cover him just like we did with the houses. And since we'll be able to see these bunnies from both sides I'm going to paint the back sides of them with my Waverly chalk paint in celery and then I'll also paint two dowels or skewers in that same celery color. So I'm going to wait for my paint to dry before cutting my bunnies out and then I'll just go around the edges with my scissors and then I'll go back in with my sanding block to get those edges nice and distressed and pretty. And then I'm going to take some of that celery and go over my terracotta pots with kind of a dry brush and give it a rustic patina just to make it look nice and farmhousey and springy fresh. And then I'm going to take some scrap floral foam and hot glue that into the bottom of my little pots and then I'll take some Dollar Tree onion grass and just pull that apart and take individual sections that I can just poke around into the sides of my pot and I'll make sure that the back ones are taller than the front because I want my bunnies to be seen and then I'll take some Spanish moss and pop that into the top and to make my front ones a little bit shorter I just cut those down but made them a little bit jaggedy so it didn't look like they were just freshly cut So now I'm going to take my skewers and attach those to the back sides of my bunnies and then I'm going to pop them into the pots and I made sure to break one of them down so that it's a little bit lower and they're staggered and look like they're chasing after each other. And then I'm going to take some pretty white roses from the Dollar Tree and pop a few of those right at the base of my dowel. Now I didn't have any white pom-poms that would work for the size of their fannies so I just took a cotton ball and rolled it in my hand to make it a little bit tighter and then used some hot glue to pop it right on their bums. And here they are all finished and oh my goodness these guys just have my whole heart. I think they're so pretty. You could either paint them or stain them or do whatever you want. You could use wrapping paper or tissue paper or even spring napkins. But I think it's the pretty green coordinating paper that just steals the show. But I love how these turned out and I hope you guys like them too. This next Dollar Tree DIY is sure to quench your spring fever. I'm going to be using an organizer and I'm going to paint that white as well as two signs. And I'm also going to be painting a Valentine's Day banner and I'm painting everything to start with in white. And then on my banner I'm going to take some celery and moss and some white and just blend those pretty colors all into that pocket. Well that's what it's becoming. It's a banner right now but it's going to become a pocket. <laughs> And once I get that all nice and blended, I'm going to go on the outsides of that pocket with some darker moss just to give it kind of an outline. So now I'm going to attach my two signs using some craft sticks and I'll just place some hot glue on there and cover up that seam so they stick together. And then I'm going to take my elephant chalk paint and I'm going to mix that into my white and then I'll just make some long vertical lines and blend that in to make it look like long weathered planks. And I'll darken the edges as well to make it look nice and distressed.
So then I made a decal that says a pocket full of posies and I don't think you get much more springy than that. But I'll have this available in my Etsy shop as well and that's White Sparrow Living. And then I'm going to take some of this pink burlap ribbon and attach it around the middle where I connected those two boards just to give it some more security and kind of hide those curved edges where the boards come together. And while I was looking at the back of this I decided to go ahead and paint the back. I was trying to conserve my white chalk paint but I just couldn't handle it so I went ahead and painted it. So now I'm gonna take my pocket and I'm gonna place it right over that middle portion and I'm only gonna glue the sides and the bottom of that pocket so that I can pop all of my pretty flowers into the top. And then I'm gonna take my organizer and I just took some more burlap ribbon to make kind of a hinge and I'll hot glue that to the back of my board towards the bottom so that when it's standing up on the ground or you could have it on a countertop, that's gonna be kind of our kickstand to pop our sign up. So now I'm going to take a whole bunch of pretty floral picks and just start popping them into my pocket and I'm going to leave the little butterfly in there so that he can frolic in the flowers I guess. <laughs> This next Dollar Tree Spring DIY is all about the painting and if you love Buffalo Check you're gonna love this one. So all I did was start with my wooden bunny and I'm gonna take some painters tape and place that right down the center of that little guy and then I'll take another piece and then another piece and they're all gonna be right next to each other and I'm gonna pull that second piece out so that I'm leaving the same size gap as what my tape is. So then I'm gonna take some Mod Podge to make sure that I don't have any bleeding whatsoever and then once that dries I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk paint in white and paint those stripes. Then I'm gonna pull off my tape and then I'm gonna start taping it again going horizontally. And for that, on one bunny, I'm gonna use my ballet slipper and add a little bit of white to that to make it a nice light shade of pretty pink. And then I'm gonna paint those stripes in the horizontal direction. And each of my bunnies will have a different color theme. So I'll have one in pink, one in purple, and one in green. So once my paint dries on that second layer of stripes, I'm gonna take my tape again and do the exact same thing that I did before, covering the line exactly as I had them in that first set of stripes. And then I'm gonna take the color right out of the bottle so it's the darkest version of our pink. And then once you start removing the tape, oh, that's the best part. I'm also going to be using two of these organizers, the same ones that we used in the last DIY, and I'm going to paint them both using my Waverly chalk paint in white. You could spray paint this, but I didn't really want a perfect coverage, so I wanted some of that black to show through. And now I'm going to take some zip ties from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to place two of them right in the middle so that my two trays are attached, and I get one nice long big one. So now I'm going to take some petals from a hydrangea from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put some hot glue on the back of it and cover up those holes. And I knew I was going to be doing this which is why I didn't cover them up with the spackle like I normally would. And then for their necks I'm going to make a little jute twine bow and I wrapped it around my sanding block six times so that it would be nice and full and then I'll just hot glue that to each of them. So 
So then I took six of the styrofoam eggs and I'm gonna paint two in the pink color, two in the purple, and two in the green. And then using my black paint pen, I'm gonna write on each of my eggs one word and it will say, Behold, I make all things new, Revelation 21.5. And I'm just freehanding it and trying to make it look like that Ray Dunn inspired look. So now I'm going to take a little bit of jute twine and make a sweet little bow at the bottom of each of my eggs. And then I'm going to take my tray and lay out my bunnies the way that I want them. Oh, and apparently I've already glued these together. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull that tray up onto those bunnies so that it sits right in front of them. And then I'm going to take some scrap floral foam and cut that down so that it fits into my tray. And then I'll cover that with some Spanish moss. And then I'll break off my skewers and make my eggs sit a little bit lower in front of my bunnies. And then I had some green excelsior that someone had given me and I'm just gonna tuck that in there to make it softer and have a little bit more green. And here it is all finished and oh my goodness I love this so much. And for anyone who doesn't think bunnies and eggs should be included in Easter because of their paganistic roots, just look at what Jesus did for the meaning of the cross. It used to represent torture and suffering, and now it's a beautiful symbol of love and hope. So it doesn't matter what something, or someone for that matter, used to be or mean. It's what it means to you. And if Jesus is your cornerstone, Behold, he will make all things new. For this next spring DIY, this was part of a Look for Less challenge hosted by Yami over at the Latina next door. And I was trying to duplicate this Hello Spring wreath from Kirkland's, which was $34.99. And I thought I could make it a little bit cheaper. So I'm gonna be using this splatter screen. And if you remember our little pickle jar DIY, this is the lid that I used for it. And then I'm going to take some of these metal words and we have Easter blessings. And I'm just going to paint both of those words in white and then I'm going to attach them to my splatter screen right in the middle. And I'm going to use the word to cover up that hole where that handle was. And then I'm gonna use some of these really pretty flowers and these are from Hobby Lobby. I can't remember how much they are, but they're almost like paper flowers. They're really dainty and light. And then I'll add some more Dollar Tree flowers and some Hobby Lobby flowers. And as you can see on the original, it had a little bit more towards the middle and then gradually had less and less as it went out towards the sides. And even though the inspiration piece was done in blues, I only had lavenders to work with, so I just made that my pop of color. And then once I got it all put together, I'll take a little piece of paddle wire to make a hook and it's all done. And here's how it turned out, and I think this is so pretty, and it only ended up costing $9.50, 
I'm just too cheap to pay $35 for a wreath. But anyway, I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. Our next spring DIY is something that can be used all year round and I'm using a little bit of trash in this project as well and the first thing I'm going to do is take some barbecue brushes and I'm just going to pull out those bristles using my pliers and then once I get them all out I'm going to take some spackle and fill in all those holes and then I'll sand them down so that they're nice and smooth. You'll still be able to see the holes but I think that's part of the charm of this project. So then I'm going to attach these all together side by side and I'm using my Gorilla Glue and then I used a rubber band to hold them together while that dried. And then I'm going to take two Jenga pieces and I'm going to hot glue those together and those are going to be the feet of our little stand. And then I'm going to take my Waverly Wax in Antique and I'm going to paint the whole thing but the bottom is going to remain the way it is and then the top I'm going to add some white to it and then get that nicely distressed so that some of that honey wood color will be peeking through. So now I'm going to take some jute twine and wrap around the top of my jars so that it covers up all of those threads and then I'm going to take some more of that burlap fabric linen ribbon and I'm just going to take a needle and thread and thread it through and I'm making a pinwheel flower so I'll just gather it and make it into a circle and then I'll sew it at the end so that it stays together. And you can do this with any ribbon that you have and this works best if you don't have wire edged ribbon. So now I'm going to place my caper bottles on my board and I'm just going to mark where I want each one of them to go. Now you do not have to do this part. I'm using power drills. Not a great idea and you'll see that in a second. But if you just glue those down onto the boards directly, it should work just fine. So I started out with a spade bit, but it turns out that the largest one that you can get is just not quite wide enough to fit my caper jar inside of them. So then I tried this bit, and I forgot what this is called, but it's in the original video. <laughs> and again, I was not able to get the hole into that wood. And so Michael J had to help me, but I had already kind of ruined it. So I'm going to just kind of cover all of that up with some nautical rope, and I'll just hot glue that at the base to cover up all that carnage. <laughs> So then I just hot glued my pinwheels to the fronts of my jars and stuck some lamb's ear from Walmart inside and it was all done. And here it is and I think this is so pretty and like I said you can put whatever you want inside to go with the different season or whatever it is. I also am still to this day using it for the grandkids in their distance learning classroom to hold some pencils and school supplies. I'll show you that in just a second. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too.
I made this next Dollar Tree DIY into a Lenten project, but I am also going to show you how you can make it into just a regular spring or anytime project. So I'll be giving you a few options here. So I'm going to take this wooden banner and get all of the glittery frou-frou off of it using my sanding block. And then I'm going to use some painter's tape to tape off that top wood piece because I liked the color of it. And then I'm going to take my chalk paint and paint it completely white. So now I'm going to take these little jars and I'm going to use some jute twine to wrap around the bottom and I'll just hot glue that to attach it. And then I'm going to take three of these Dollar Tree tags and I'll write three separate words. And one option would be to write faith, hope, and love. Of course you can write whatever you want, but since this is for Lent, I'm going to be writing the three pillars of Lent and that's pray, fast, and give. So I'm just using that downstroke method again and then I'm going to attach these later to my little canisters. So now I'm going to remove the painter's tape from my wood and then I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in ink, which is really just black, and I'm going to make that enamel wear look again using a makeup sponge. And then one option is to just make a perky bow and put that at the top and then I'm using these little adhesive dots from Dollar Tree to attach these little canisters. I used two of them, one at the top and one at the bottom, but in the middle of the night they did fall off, <laughs> so I did have to hot glue them. And then I'm just going to tuck some greenery in there. You can use all different kinds for whatever your home decor is. But for Lent, I'm going to go ahead and take this little piece of cardboard from a triangle frame and then I'll paint that black with my chalk paint and then I'll take a white paint pen and I'm going to write the word Lent. And I'll put this at the top of my banner and it'll actually be what I use to hang it with. And here's my Lenten version of my banner and of course I have the purple lavender in there and actually when I say the three pillars of Lent it's really prayer, fasting, and almsgiving but that wasn't going to quite fit on my little tags. <laughs> but I love how this turned out. I love the reason and the reminder and again another teaching tool for our kids and anyone who's interested. I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. Next we have another super simple springy wreath using a Dollar Tree 3D wreath form and I didn't have any gold spray paint so I made it a little more difficult than it needed to be by taking my gold paint pen and painting the rings. I want this to look like one of these wreaths that you see in a lot of clip art and I just think these are so so pretty. So I decided to attach these together on the pegs that are on the largest circle and I'm just going to put them on there but in the wrong order so that it would have that staggered look. And then I'll add some nylon zip ties to keep it all in place and secure. So now I'm going to take some ferns that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to split those apart and then using some paddle wire I'm going to attach that to the bottom of my rings. And I made sure to have those little posts at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position so that I could cover those with greenery and you can't see them. And then I'm going to take some Dusty Miller greenery from Walmart and attach that to both sides right on top of my ferns and then I'll take some lamb's ear, add that on there and then I'll take some super pretty creamy roses from the Dollar Tree and put them in a really happy little cluster right in the center of my greenery. And then at the top to cover that post, I'm going to take some greenery and one more rose and that'll cover that up. Thank you. 
And here it is all finished and I think this is so pretty and soft and even though the Dollar Tree ferns aren't totally beautiful by themselves, when you couple it with some other items and add some beautiful flowers, I think it makes them look beautiful. But I love this and I hope you like it too. In this spring DIY, we're going to be making an Easter project, and so I'm going to cut down some buffalo check blanket. I haven't seen this lately, but maybe in other stores they still have it. And I'm just going to make it three squares wide so that it'll fit around our metal planter. And instead of using this as a planter, we're going to be turning it upside down and using it as a base or platform. So I'm going to glue that baby blanket all the way around and then in the back I'm going to cut it down and then close up that seam. And then to give it a clean edge I'm going to take some nautical rope and glue that around the bottom of our planter which is the top of our platform. So now I'm going to take the metal words and the bow off of my crosses and I'm going to repaint the edges just to make it a little bit smoother and maybe not so playful I guess. And then I'm going to take some craft sticks and put two of them towards the front of our platform so that the front cross will be a little bit higher. And then I'll take my other two crosses and glue those down towards the back and add an angle. And then I'm going to add my Spanish moss around all three crosses to cover up the blocks and the bases. And you want to make sure you do that after you glue the crosses down. <laughs> So now I'm going to take some jute twine and I just wrapped it around a few times and tied it in the middle and then I'll do that a second time so that it's a nice round flower shaped medallion and I'll attach those to the back two crosses. So now I'm going to take some more of that blooming bush and I think it looks like a burning bush but <laughs> anyway I think it looks like the crown of thorns and that's what I'm going to make it into. So I took one of these small little grapevine napkin holders and I'm going to take some of those thorny pieces and attach it to my napkin ring using some paddle wire and actually make a little crown of thorns. And then I'm going to go in with some gray tone chalk paints and I'm going to paint that all up. And then I'm going to take some regular nails and stick those into my crown of thorns and then I'll take the word that I took off of one of the crosses and put that on front of my crown of thorns. And then I'm going to take some of this sheer material that I really love because it has that really drapey, flowy look. And I'm going to tie two pieces of jute twine about three inches apart. And then I'm going to drape that onto the front cross, let it drape in the front, and then glue it on the back. And then I'm going to take my black paint pen and write I-N-R-I, which stands for Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. And then I'm going to take my crown of thorns piece and hot glue that to the front of that platform. And then a sweet viewer told me to use hairspray on moss like this so it doesn't go everywhere. And this Easter project is done. And here it is all finished and I love how this turned out and I cannot tell you how many people have sent me pictures of this same project that they've replicated and it just makes my heart so happy that everyone wants to get some more Jesus into their home decor and that was before we had the Dollar Tree Sparrows Nest on Facebook where we could share it with everyone so even if you have some old projects I wish you'd go on there and share them I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. 
Oh my goodness, we are at DIY number 45, and I really do love this one. This was one of my first ones, and it's really special to me. So we're going to be making a little bird cage, and I'm taking off the chain from this hanging planter, and then I'm going to use a pie tin for the base, and I'm just going to paint it white with my chalk paint, of course. And then I found this lid that was on a Dollar Tree container and I'm just gonna paint that white I'll paint the planter white and then I have a little birdie that we're gonna paint white you've seen me do this a few times now and then I'm also going to paint my candle holder white even though it's already white I want it to have the same finish so then I'm gonna go in with some gray tones and just get that all nice and distressed and rustic looking and I bent the little tabs that are on the hanging planter where the chains would go so that when I set this on top of my pie tin, it's going to sit on top of it instead of over it. So then I used some E6000 to attach my plastic lid to the top of my birdcage and then I turned it over and took some hot glue and went over each of those crossbars so that it would get a really good connection and stay in place. And then I'm going to take a lid and add some Excelsior to it and make a little nest in there so that I can place my birdie on there. And then I'm going to add some more of that Walmart lavender to the inside of my pie tin. And then I'll fill the middle with some more Excelsior. And to get my little birdie to sit up a little higher, I put an empty spool at the bottom and then place my nest on top of that. And then I'm going to use some jute twine to wrap around the part where my plastic lid is attached to the birdcage because I could see a little bit of that hot glue in there and I didn't want to see that. And then I'll take another piece of jute twine and add it to the bottom of my candle holder and it is done. And here's how this spring project turned out and I love this so much. I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects and thank you so much for sticking with me for this full two hours of a non-stop binge worthy Dollar Tree spring DIY video. Make sure to give me a thumbs up comment let me know what you think if you're not already i hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time i upload a brand new video i hope everyone has a blessed day a blessed spring and a very blessed easter and remember to always be the light bye